Hello, Joanne Cooper here. Um, there's been quite a lot of to and froing about endings in Band in a Box. Um, so I thought I would do a quick video about how I do endings. I know that there are loads of different ways of doing endings and everybody's probably got their favorite ways, but I'm going to run you through how I do endings um, generally with all my songs. So what I've done is I've just pulled up uh, Amazing Grace. You can download this song, um, this SGU for free from my website. You can just Google Joanne Cooper and you'll find it and you can download that and a whole lot of other SGUs. Now you can see that this song uh, starts at bar one and goes to bar 130. And then in bar 130 is where the chords of the song finish okay the chord sequence of the song finishes then what I've got after bar 140 is the standard uh, default ending that band in a box uses the four bar ending and what's key here is that you put the tonic here in this ending whatever this this happens to be um, make sure that 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 chord is the tonic if I open up another song where it doesn't actually end the chord sequence on the tonic you can see here it goes to E B then I have uh, got the tonic chord in this ending and Band in a Box will generate a nice ending uh, for these bars. Okay, so I'm just going to call up Amazing Grace again because it's nice and easy. So what Band in a Box does is it plays this chord sequence from, one, uh, from, from bar 127 to 130 and then it'll just fade out the instruments individually. It'll generate something nice for you. You don't have to worry. So just... Press OK on bar 127 and you'll hear what it sounds like. Any minute now. Maybe it's still thinking. Oh, blank. Here we go. Okay, so you can hear you can hear what um what band in a box did there with that okay if and 99 percent of the time i use that standard ending um i found that it generally works if you wanted a nice sharp stop you know how some 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 songs stop on the last chord of the song what i normally do and i know that there are different ways of doing it i'll just extend this this ending say 140 okay and then on this last chord I will just make it G I'll make it a hold chord which you can just type in G and then three dots take out that chord take out that part marking and um, or you can uh, you can do use chord settings to do that so you're holding all the instruments on that bar okay so if I play from bar 127 again you will hear that it'll just do one nice long strum on bar 130. Here we go. Okay, so what I'll do there is I will just save that as a, a, a wave or whatever, and then I'll get rid of any other rubbish that it has generated at the end there, because I, I, I want to use that. So I just go edit, uh, sorry, file, save special, save as a wave. I'm just going to say test. Um, I'll just say amazing grace. Grace test okay and then what I'll do is I'll go into any audio editing software I use um, I use audacity I don't know why I use audacity I just always have I like I don't know what I like about it I just always have used it it's a free tool you can download it um, for free from the internet so I don't know I just seem to have ended up using that as a audio editing tool but um, there are lots of other options and you might have your favorite audio editing tool uh, which you're welcome to use you could even try and use band in a box to edit audio I wouldn't recommend it right so I'm just going to go into my audio editing tool of choice which is audacity and I'm going to open that that um, amazing grace test wave file that I've just generated okay and you can see there that's that, that that long G that I've got and then there was the ending that I just delete that okay so 
I'll delete a little bit of the trailing mess there. And then, then I will have that last... It's probably not going to come through for you. Okay. So those are the ways that I use to manipulate endings within Band in a Box. If I still don't like the way that uh, Band in a Box has generated endings, I will use Real Band. Okay. Now... I know that there is some confusion about what real band is and what it does, and I need to go and do some more videos on that. But suffice it to say, I use real band as my door of choice for a whole lot of reasons, which I won't go into. Um, but if I don't like the the, ba the ending that uh, band in a box is generated, then I will use real band to 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 generate endings for specific instruments in specific ways. Okay, so I'm just going to open. Um, always on my mind, okay. So, uh, just remember the first time you open an SGU file inside Real Band, it does take a little bit of time to generate because it has to generate all these um, backing tracks for you. Um, but if you save it as a as a native uh, Real Band file, which is an SGU, SEQ, S E Q, then it'll open it up very quickly the next time you open it. So it's only the first time that you open a, a, a band in a box file in real band that it takes a little bit of time to generate the real tag. So you just have to be a little bit patient. So that is what we'll be. Okay, it's nearly done here. It says 100% uh, done. Okay, and now it's finally rendering the, the real drums, and then I can have a look at my, my real band file. Right, we're in business. Okay, so this is just a normal band in a box file opened in real band. Okay, so these tracks are exactly the same as if you had them in band in a box, but they're obviously presented in a different way. So if I have a look at the ending, this ending will be more or less the same as the one that, that you heard inside band in a box. Okay, so I'll just play this. Okay, so if I didn't like the way, say, for example, the steel, pedal steel carried on playing after all the other instruments and I wanted to, to chop it out a lot earlier, say I wanted to end it on bar 69 or whatever, I would go into the chords menu, chords item, and on this bar 69, I'd just say G, one, two, oh, where's it gone? Whoops. I would just type G, one, two, three dots. Okay, that's the same as a hold chord. And then I would remove this G here. All right. Then what it's going to do, then I come back into Real Band and I just generate that track. Okay, so then it's going to use whatever I've set in the chord settings there with those holds just for the regenerated track. It's not going to use it for these other ones that I don't regenerate. So if I right click that and I just say select hold track and I just generate... Um, this this one regenerate selected region. It's just going to regenerate uh, the pedal steel track. It's not going to regenerate all these other tracks, and it's going to use that held chord instruction that I typed in the chords uh, to generate the that that track. Okay, so I hope this makes sense because it is a hugely powerful feature of Real Band. Okay, so I don't know what it's done here. Let's just solo that. Okay, so it's done another hold chord after that. So what I could do is just get rid of that and then I could just fade that out. Fade out, and change, fade out. Okay, so now I've got the, the pedal steel fading out starting at bar 68. All right, so that's going to affect the ending of my song. So the long and the short of it is that I would go through each one of these these uh, ending files, ending uh, these tracks, and, and and manipulate the endings uh, using these hold settings into exactly what I want the ending to sound like. So I hope that has helped. Please leave a, a message or questions or topics that you want me to cover in these short little videos, and I will do it with pleasure. Thanks. Bye.